Hello, fun. My name is Nick, and I'm here at the Rock River All-Season Competition in Rockford, Illinois, with Team 5934 Crobotics. They've had an incredibly successful season, being picked up first round at both of their regionals and making it to the finals at the incredibly competitive Midwest Regional. They have an incredibly unique four-bar length big block that has everything their robot does on board. Let's more about how all of this works coming up on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted at Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video. Now we're going over to Blake to talk about their, with the mechanics behind their amp and shooter. All right, so our amp and shooter system is a four bar linkage. We have the crank down here and we have the back bar is this large panel that houses our speed controllers, sponsor stickers, and all of our inspection stuff. Uh, Nathan, if you want to bring the intake down, we'll show you the motion of it. So we can move down into our shoot position here. We can keep driving downwards into our intaking off the ground position, where we intake off the ground. We sit right above the ground there. We, we have all of it is driven on this axle. We have a steel axle running across the center of the robot and it's on a beefy gearbox, running about 182 to one reduction off of a single Neo. We use an absolute encoder on the center shaft to determine the position of the whole assembly at all times. Yeah, so we can also drive it all the way up into the amp position, where we flip over and we shoot the amp out this way. We just plop it right in. Blake, that's all very cool. One thing I was curious about is, how did you manage to get this packaging? It's a very neat setup that I haven't seen on many other teams. So we packaged very tight, but we also try to get nice and small, but also repairable. So this entire assembly comes off with just four bolts, one, two, and then same on the opposite side. We went as slim as we could while still keeping all the features. And we want to be really small and repairable also. Absolutely. Uh, now we're going over to Nathan to talk about the code that makes all of this work. Okay, so um, it took a little while to program this, but we programmed in set positions for each task that we wanted to do with this robot. So this position we programmed in to, um, to intake off the ground, and we ended up also using this position for passing. Uh, the next position we programmed was the shooter position. So we call this the shooter position, and we shoot into the speaker for this position. Uh, we do have to go right up against the subwoofer to shoot into the speaker, or we can go on any of the sides. We ended up, uh, these bars ended up being too long when we first started this, so we had to cut them down so we could get the right positioning in. Uh, then the next position we had was the amp position. Uh, so with this position, we shoot, we shoot into the amp. Uh, and the last position we had was the source, the source position. So the source position is very similar to the amp position, but we use it if our ground intake isn't working to intake from the source. Um, all of this, we also had to program different buttons to do different tasks for each different position that we had. Uh, so it's a little meticulous, but. Um, we eventually succeeded in, in, uh, in being able to do all these different tasks that we have on. Absolutely. Uh, were there any particular struggles you really had to work on to overcome to get all this to work? It's very, it's a very cool set of code, and as a programmer myself, I know some of this can be a bit tricky sometimes. Um, so one one obstacle that we had was the sensor that we used um, in the arm. The sensor, I believe, is is here. We have a sensor to uh, detect notes or not. We were trying to automa uh, uh, automatize the process a little bit more 
so um, so that the aux driver didn't have to didn't have to remember so many buttons. Um, it took a while for us to be able to automatize it, um, but it ended up in the end we overcame the obstacles and um, we did. It was able to help the aux driver. Very cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time for robotics. You've had an incredible season with an incredibly unique robot. I hope this event continues going well for you. Thank you so much for your time once again. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video.